Hello and welcome to our Render Channel's compositing quick start video for V-Ray for Revit. In this video, we'll go over how to composite render channels in an image editor for flexibility to improve your workflow. This allows you to adjust specific components of a rendered image to give you much better control over the final quality of your output. Start Revit and open the V-Ray frame buffer or VFB. Here we see the VFB with the render from the last tutorial, which you can check out and download at the URL shown below. However, if you don't wish to go through that tutorial to generate your own render of that project, in the VFB, click the Load Image icon and navigate to the channels.vrimg file from the downloaded assets from this tutorial's webpage linked below. This will load the beauty render as well as all its channels from that project. Now, the first thing to do is to save out the render channels out to disk by clicking the disk icon in the VFB. For the image type, we're going to need a 32-bit image file to use in compositing as 8-bit images won't do well. Choose Open EXR and give the image a name and a location to which to save. I'm calling mine Compositing. This will save out all the channels with Compositing as the base name. Open an image editor, such as Photoshop. To load the many images we have into a single working file in Photoshop, click File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Click Browse and select the files you want in your stack in Photoshop. We'll be using the render channels that remake up the beauty pass. Compositing.exr is the full RGB pass itself, so select that first. Then select these following passes. With everything selected, click OK. I'll elapse time as the images load into a single Photoshop file as layers. Move the RGB channel layer, composite.exr, up to the top. Notice that the sky area is completely cut out. It is still there, but it's being cut by the alpha channel inherent in the file. Now, we just need to disable that transparency. So, go to the Layer menu and select Layer Mask from Transparency. That takes the alpha transparency and turns it into a Photoshop mask for that layer. Now, I'll drag that mask down to the trash icon and click delete in the dialog window. Now, the sky color is back in the layer. You can repeat this procedure for all the remaining layers, or you can create an action script like the one I've created for you here. Click here and select Load Actions and navigate to the downloaded assets for this tutorial and select the file Photoshop Remove Alpha.atn. Now all you need to do is select the layer and then select Remove Alpha in the Actions and click Play. Repeat for the remaining layers and you'll be all done. Now our task at hand is to properly layer all these images together to reform the beauty or RGB render. And since these are all additive layers, the ordering isn't that important. First, hide the compositing.exr layer to get that out of the way. Now the layers all pretty much need to stack on top of each other using the linear dodge add mode. So select all the layers and in the layer mode drop down menu, select linear dodge add to change them all at once. Each layer's color information is now adding on top of the previous layers, which gives us the beauty pass. Compare with the top RGB layer and you can see that our stack with the additive mode is the same as our beauty render. Now that we have this, we can start tweaking the individual layers to adjust the image. For example, I can get rid of the atmosphere by turning off that layer, or turn off the direct lighting from the sun, or even turn off the reflections if I needed to. The power really comes from adjusting these layers as opposed to turning them off or on. For example, if the specular reflections seem too bright, I can adjust the opacity of just that layer to reduce the specularity here to about half. Now, let's reduce the amount of bounced light inside the room 
by reducing the opacity of the global illumination layer. I'll set this to about 80% for a bit more mood in the render. I can also affect the coloration. I'll add an adjustment layer with a hue saturation to be placed right above the global illumination. Click this button in the properties to have that adjustment layer affect only the GI layer right below it and not all the layers below it. Now, I can easily remove the saturation out of just the bounce light in the scene. And because this is a 32-bit image, there's plenty of information in the image to adjust without a loss in quality. Now that I have this, I can save this image as a 32-bit EXR or a Photoshop PSD pretty easily. But to output it for most uses, such as an online presentation, I need a more common file format, such as PNG or JPEG. First, I'll need to convert this down from 32-bit. Click the Image menu and select Mode, 8 bits per channel. Click Merge and you'll see the HDR toning dialog. Here is where you instruct Photoshop and how to go down from 32 bits to 8 bits. Select Exposure and Gamma, and then click OK to get the same look down into 8-bit space as you just had in 32 bits. As you can see, using render channels and image editing after a render gives you great control over your final image and is well worth the extra outputs. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on compositing render channels in V-Ray for Revit.